This is lecture two of chapter 17, and we're picking up talking about the different biomes across the planet. And there are nine main terrestrial biomes. I'm gonna look at eight of them. And the one that I'm going to skip where, and that's why I'm sitting over here, is called the chaparral. Um, chaparral is this dark purple right here that's in the Mediterranean. There's also a little tiny bit of it found in California. Um, I'm not going to cover that just because it is such a tiny biome and it's a fairly specialized biome. Um, the other ones are major biomes across the planet. Some of these you may be familiar with and some of them you may have actually traveled to yourself. Um, one of them I know you live in. so. Let's start off with our tropical rainforest, or as this one's listed as tropical forest. So tropical forest on our map up here in the corner is highlighted in red. So um, if you notice, it is mainly located right around the equator. And so what this does for its temperature, tropical forests are located in areas that are going to be warm year round. So it never gets below freezing in these areas. So these guys are going to stay warm year round and it rains year round here. So these guys are called tropical rainforests because it rains. Um, in some of these forests it will rain every day and this allows the plants to grow in huge numbers and in a huge diversity. So if you look in this picture pretty much all you can see is plants. Um, so lots and lots of different types of plants, um, trees, orchids, ferns. I mean, every plant group that we talked about in our previous chapter is found in a tropical rainforest and in tons of different species. In fact, tropical forests contain the largest number of species on the planet for plants and for animals. Um, and so also a wide variety of animals here because there's that wide variety of plants. So lots of different plants and animals because you've got that year-round temperature and year-round rain that allows for the variety to build up. Now the next one we're going to look at is the savanna. And if you look, it's this pink color and it's pretty much on either side of the tropical forests. And savanna you may recognize if you've ever watched any National Geographic films. Um, you can see it's these wide open spaces. Um, the savanna you might be able to guess what the temperature is like based on where it's located at. It is going to be uh, warm to hot year-round just like the tropical forests. Uh, but because it is a little farther out away from the equator, it's not going to get as much rain. The savannas actually have a rainy season so and a dry season. So it's only going to rain for a couple of months, you know, three to four months out of the year. Um, and then it will start to dry out. And so the plant life is quite different. There are trees, but you notice that there are not nearly as many trees in the savanna as there are in the forest, the tropical forests. Um, these are actually sometimes called tropical grasslands because the main plant that is found in a savanna is grass. And because of that, since the main plants found in savannas are grass, because they tolerate drying out and then getting wet again, quite well, we get lots of grazing animals. So why I said you've probably seen these in National Geographic films, because these are the areas where things like lions and zebras and giraffes and elephants are generally found. Um, so we have wide open spaces, lots of grazing land, so lots of grazing animals in savanna areas. Oop, there we go. Um, so the next one that we're going to look at is the desert. The deserts are highlighted on our map up here in yellow. So you might be able to notice we're moving outward. So we've gone from tropical forests to savannas, now to deserts. So the yellow band is kind of on either side in general from the savannas. And deserts are going to be 
hot generally, but they can actually drop below freezing at night. Um, if anybody has been to the Southwest uh, United States, um, I actually got a chance to travel out there and it's really bizarre because in the middle of the day, you're going to be walking around shorts, t-shirt, maybe even sleeveless. And then at night, it will drop below freezing and you'll be in your sleeping bag with a blanket wrapped around you. Um, and this has to do with the fact that there's nothing to hold the heat. There is very little water here and therefore very little vegetation. So the one thing that actually is the big characteristic for a desert isn't so much the heat, it's the lack of precipitation. So that deserts get very little precipitation and therefore have very few plants, as you can see in the picture here. Um, the plants that are there are ones that are good at saving water. And then the animals that are gonna be here generally for the most part are small and are gonna generally be nocturnal. So they're only gonna come out at night so that they can save their water. Um, so they're only gonna come out when it's cooler. All right, our next one is the temperate grasslands. So they are highlighted in this orange color. So we're talking central United States. We're talking the central band here across Eurasia. A little bit of South America, a little touch of Australia. So the temperate grasslands, these are going to be like the Dakotas, uh, Kansas, those kind of areas in the United States. Um, so you may be able to guess what kind of plants grow here. The main plant for a temperate grassland is grass. Um, you can see no trees in this picture. There may be one or two spotted trees, kind of like the savanna, but pretty much all grass here. So what does this word here mean, temperate? So temperate me is talking about the fact that these areas have seasons. So if you look where we're at on the globe, we're here and we're up here. And these regions have seasons. So they're going to have a winter and a summer. And so that means that for part of the year it gets cold, for part of the year it gets hot. Um, and so that's what we're looking at. Temperate is talking about having seasons. And so because it's temperate, it doesn't stay hot year round, it does get cold. And for temperate grasslands, you can see there is water sitting here. Um, we've got some rivers in this case, or creeks. Um, and temperate grasslands get a moderate amount of precipitation. They get more than deserts. Um, but less obviously than a tropical rainforest. And this allows the grasslands to continue to grow, but they don't get enough really to support trees. Trees require quite a bit of water. And so that's why we have mainly grass in these temperate grasslands rather than trees. Again, like savannas, most of the temperate grasslands that are still surviving are gonna have grazing animals like buffalo. Our next biome is the temperate deciduous forest. So that's the green area. So the Eastern United States, um, most of Europe, um, a little bit of the coast over here in Asia. And that's pretty much it for the temperate deciduous forest. Um, now this is the one that I know that you've been to, even if you haven't been to any of the other ones that we've talked about so far, because this is Ohio. Um, Ohio is temperate deciduous forest, again, temperate for the seasons. So we have seasons, we get hot, we get cold, um, and we have a good amount of rainfall in the temperate deciduous forest. Um, and we get it kind of year round. Now we do have more precipitation in certain seasons than others, but we do get good amount of precipitation and this allows it to support trees. Um, so the temperate deciduous forest, what does this word mean, deciduous? It's describing the types of trees. So the trees that you see here in this picture are deciduous trees. Deciduous means that the trees lose their leaves in the fall. 
So this is different from other plants like evergreens where they le keep their leaves year round. So deciduous forests just are made up of plants that lose their leaves in the fall. So like oak trees, maple trees, um, those types of plants versus something like a tropical forest where they keep their leaves year round. All right, so we're going to move a little farther north now. Now we're looking at the coniferous forests. These guys are in this kind of mid blue. So we're looking at Canada, basically, and a little bit of southern uh, Alaska. This is pretty much all of Russia and some of the northern European countries. And the big thing here, as you can tell, plant wise, we're looking at evergreens, we're looking at conifers, so pine trees and cypress, things like this. Um, so these guys are going to be found here because as we've been going north, the temperature is starting to change. Now they're still going to have seasons. Um, the joke that I've heard from people up in this area is that they do have seasons. They have cold and really cold. Um, that it does get warmer in the summer than it is in the winter. And so they still have a season set like that. They do get precipitation, um, not as much precipitation as say a temperate deciduous forest. Um, and their precipitation is gonna come in the form of snow. So that's gonna make a big difference as far as you know how these trees are gonna grow. So coniferous forests generally only grow uh, quite a bit in the um, spring and summer. Uh, the rest of the time they're just kind of chilling, literally and figuratively. Um, and so then as far as the animals that you have up here, you're going to find things like bear, elk, uh, moose, those kinds of guys. Um, you also have animals that migrate through here um, as they go north and south. Um, so a lot of the same sort of animals you find in a carnivorous forest that you might find in a temperate deciduous forest. The next one up is the next farther north and that is the tundra. So these are the light blue guys right up here on the edge of Canada and Russia. Um, the tundra as you can see pretty barren looking. Um, this area stays below freezing for most of the year. Um, it only actually becomes unfrozen. It becomes above freezing for about three months in the year, and that's during the summer because the sun is above the horizon for 24 hours a day. Um, so for those three months, it will be above freezing and everything can thaw. Um, and you get precipitation up here not a lot but some and the precipitation is snow so it will melt during that summertime um, and it allows some plants to grow not a lot so it's kind of hard to tell from this picture but the kinds of plants that are going to grow in the tundra are going to be things like mosses and lichens um, you might get some small types of little shrubs so that's what you're seeing here but nothing very big because Come the end of summer, everything's going to freeze again, and most of the plants don't tolerate freezing. Mosses and lichens do, um, but most of the other guys that have like root systems and stuff don't like to be frozen. Um, as far as animals up here, there are very few animals that actually live year round in the tundra. Most animals migrate up like reindeer and eat, and then they migrate back down. The last of the terrestrial biomes is polar ice. So this would be the Arctic, like uh, Greenland, and the Antarctic continent. So polar ice, um, not a whole lot going on here. Obviously, it is cold year round. Um, so it is, stays frozen year round. Um, it's also considered a desert um, because the precipitation is so low. So very little precipitation, it is cold. Um, there are no plants on the polar ice. So how is their photosynthesis? It happens out in the ocean under the ice. And so that's where the food comes from for this area. Um, so animals that are here like penguins in the Antarctic and seals and so forth are getting their food from off the polar ice. 
All right, so that wraps up the terrestrial biomes, and we'll pick up in our next lecture um, with more on ecosystems.